Mm. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the July 21st, 2015 meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would rise, I pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, can I ask uh, the far ends? Could I ask you, um, Selectman Bean, to either sit next to Michael or come sit over here? And not picking on the seat that you chose, instead, what happens is right now we are still without a secretary, and it does make it difficult viewing and watching the votes. And tonight, if we take a vote on anything, um, going to have there be an audible roll call uh, because in reviewing the video, the votes we took one vote, but it wasn't it wasn't clear. Okay, so bear with me. We'll have a secretary soon, I hope. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Joining us over here. Okay, um, as usual, I'm going to go around the room and start with Jerry. Introductions, we know who you are, but. <laughs> Arizona Hawaii, I currently am a member of the Budget Committee, involved in the school board, the representative. I'm Carol. Bob Ladd, precinct representative. Timothy Citizen Jones, voters representative. <laughs> Stephen LaBranche. Eileen Latimer, chairman. Brian Lapham. Dave Wood, state rep. Scott Blair. Mike Pierce. Phil Bean. Nick Bridal. Thank you. And considering it's a beautiful summer night, thank you especially for everybody being here. Um, it's a big committee, but we have a good representation tonight. I appreciate that. All right. Um, I'm going to start out very quickly by a review of correspondence. And it's fairly easy because um, for some of our requests, there really is none. I. After the last meeting, I did send out um, emails again requesting the protocol for us to be able to access um, outside counsel should we need it. And I don't think at this point anybody out there is in the dark that we've been requesting this. So it's out there one more time. The email was sent again yesterday. I had no response yesterday. I have no response today. All I'm looking for is the protocol. Selectman Bean, that did go to the chairman of the, of the, of the Board of Selectmen with copies to all members plus the town manager plus town council. I would respect that they would respectfully answer me within the next week. If you'd like to carry that back to them as yes, the selectman's rep. Yes, ma'am. And if I can just elaborate, I did speak with the chair, the town manager, and town attorney today, and the town attorney specifically addressed that, and you will be getting a response. The town attorney addressed it. Spoke briefly with the town attorney, town that's manager. Where it, that's where it started. Okay, I, I don't want. I don't want to get no, into discussion no, I, with. I, I'm I, telling you what I did today, mm -hmm. and I said you'll get a response. I don't need to say anything more than that. And really, I can talk all night about it, but. That's, you'll get a response. I'll get a response. That's okay. Right. As I get a response, I will forward it to the rest Thank of the you. members on this committee. I also put a second request out to the town clerk to define the attrition going forward with the budget committee as it um, relates to our future elections coming up. And I do not have a response back on that. I've been looking for an answer on <clears> that <throat> issue since March, since the election itself. So, again, I s another email went out yesterday. I don't know if Jane was in <coughs> town hall today I, or yesterday, but it did go out yesterday, and uh, when I get a response back, I will let you know. The town clerk is the appropriate one to ask mm -hmm. she does the ballot. But I do recall some months ago you sent the same or a similar request for the opinion of the Board of Selectmen on that matter. Did you get a response on that? From the Board of Selectmen, no. I did go outside to council in the state. Uh -huh. However, I want to gather it from the channels that it should be gotten uh -huh. from. 
and if all else fails, we will get decision from the state. But we have mechanisms within the town and offices within the town that should be able to answer that for us. So I'm giving everyone the opportunity to do that. As I recall, the question was about how the attrition is going to be handled consistent with the law requiring staggered terms. Exactly. Right. And that was not defined in the Warren article. It needs to be defined before we go get elected going forward because it will, there will be no election next year for any one non-budget committee. Going forward after that, the terms will have to be addressed until it equalizes. Otherwise, every third year you'll have no election. Well, we don't know if there'll be one because we don't know how it's going to be implemented yet. So. Exactly. We absolutely have no clue what the ballot's going to look like relative to the budget committee this year or next year. So it does beg for a response, and I've asked the town clerk to give us one, and if not, I'll go forward after that. Okay. I thought you had mentioned you were sending some of the state attorney general. Yeah, I've, done some, I've, I've, done, no, I've done some research on this, but from an official capacity, okay, I'm going through the town clerk first, through that avenue, all right? Remember, keep in mind, we're asking a lot of things out there and going to attorneys within the state and other organizations and not spending any money in doing it. So that's why we have certain offices in this town, and let's utilize them. All right. Uh, thirdly, and I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people are interested in the response from DRA um, that we did get back regarding our last meeting. I will let you know very quickly the run-through and how that shook itself out. I did go the next morning and request whether or not it had, um, the letter had been sent out, and it had. So I didn't have to wait for any kind of a 12 o'clock deadline to immediately send out a letter requesting that DRA postpone their decision. And Tim, can I ask you to read the response Madam, that Madam yes sir Wait, um, <clears throat> that response your letter request and that response has been uh, has been sent out it was right at the selectman meeting i mean do we do we need to go okay if you if you i mean I, I don't know i it was sent out an email i've read it i, I don't i don't read to have it paper? read again i'm not going to i'm not going to read it anyway you know the way about scott i'm not that kind of guy all right <laughs> all right then we don't yeah, but i will i will point out the, the substance of it which is really in paragraph 3 yeah but and it simply says that uh, RSA 32 colon 11 Roman numeral 2 is for a uh, retrospective remedy, much like we argued at our meeting, yeah. and that for a uh, the proper procedure for a prospective overexpenditure is RSA 32 colon 11 Roman numeral I, which is, of course, central to our discussion at our last meeting. So essentially, uh, our, our discussion at our last meeting is exactly uh, the fulcrum of this uh, this letter from the Department of Revenue Administration. It seems like we're exactly where we want to be. Well, we were we were interpreting the, the law correctly right. as it was written, and uh, the DRA interpreted the law in the same fashion. Yep. Okay. How's that for reading it? That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> and to wrap that up and where we are, okay, and after lengthy discussions with the commissioner's office. We're not through the year. The subject may come up again as we discussed in the meeting. It may have more timeliness as we get into the fourth quarter of the year. So it may not be a dead issue. Right. That was the okay. point too. Yeah. And the total. a lot of us were mm -hmm. of the opinion that should it be needed, um, we understand it was an expensive year. We just weren't there yet. We were premature. And that's basically what the commission is saying that if you get to that end and you see you've run out of funds, then we certainly can address it. And at that point in time, we'll need to look at exactly what the requests were, exactly what was spent for, and see if there has been any reimbursement um, from the emergency funds that were available. I haven't heard anything on that. Have you select been being yet? Pardon me, ma'am. Has the select board heard anything on the reimbursement of funds uh, I'm for the not, two emergency days? My situational awareness is uh, I'm not up to speed to address that right now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. 
All right, so that's on hold for well, the moment. It's, it's Chris, Christy Pulliam's last uh, financial report in June. Uh, Selectman Bean asked her to, uh, at her next visit, which I assume will be coming up in a couple of weeks, to supply the detailed breakdown of the, uh, those items. Okay. So we can look forward to watching the next Selectman's meeting. I assume she'll be at that one. And so that'll be next Monday night? We meet next Monday night, yes, ma'am. Is Christy Pulliam on uh, next Monday night? I, I, I don't know if she's on next week. Well, she'll be on next week or the week, or the two weeks thereafter. She may not have July, uh, July actuals. You know, uh, Selectman Bean asked her in June if the next time she comes, if she would have the details on that. The snow breakdown? Yes. Okay. Well, well stay Christy's tuned. Christy's very good at being responsive, so I would expect that she probably will. All right. Well, I'll expect that all members <clears throat> of the committee will do that. Stay tuned to the Selectman's meeting. Yeah, stay yeah, tuned. We all are. See if your questions are answered. There's no sense in making more work for anybody, but if they're not, and you have a specific question, then email me and I'll be happy to put them together in one sheet and email them over to Christy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, it's a temporary closed issue for the moment, mm -hmm. but may be revisited. I'll, I'll, I'll email a video slice of that uh, presentation if, if it's made so that you guys can readily observe it. Okay, thank you. This is the time of the year when yeah, we are all on vacation, but now we start, from this point out, we start to heat up with budget and information. And not everybody can sit there on a Monday night and watch it, but you can play it back um, and view it. So one of the easier ways to get through the budget committee is to watch the Board of Selectmen and see what's on the table, not, for, not as criticism, but as... Um, an informational standpoint and you can get up to speed that way so that would be my recommendation there all right um, on this number five I put some goal setting for 2016 I'm gonna leave that open for I don't want it to go on too long but let's give everybody a couple of minutes on this to have a brief discussion as far as setting goals going forward for 2016 that perhaps we can relay to the Board of Selectmen and the town manager and the department heads a little early on to give them some insight on where our minds are going. And I'll start it out because some of you look like a little puzzled. All right. Taking from experience the history of budgets in this town, at least in the last decade, we have a hard time building amounts of money into the budget. But we have gotten to the point where we do need things and we do need to address things. The streets are one of them. It was highly successful last year for the Warren articles. People had a choice on what they wanted and they made a lot of choices that some might not have thought would be made while keeping to pretty much a strict strict budget, increased 800000 if you want to look at it that way. So taking all of that into consideration, maybe some insight or some play with where do we go from here? How do we get some of the things we need? We know we'll be turned down somewhere. If we try to put it all in the budget, we'll be turned down. If we put things in Warren articles, we may be turned down, but selectively, people may choose things they really believe we need, like they did this year. One of the areas, and one of my goals this year, and it's can open it for discussion going around the table is I'd like to approach the Board of Selectmen with the idea that we strip out from the budget any amounts related to road improvement, road paving, and we try to foster a, a road improvement fund to the tune of maybe a million dollars a year. That's what we're spending this year. <coughs> And maybe I'm premature. Maybe I want to see how far a million dollars got us. When you add it up, everything in the budget, when you add, it, add up all the Warren articles that passed, 
you're going to see that that figure is a million dollars. And I truly believe you need that kind of a figure to actually have any of an ongoing program. Putting two, three hundred thousand dollars at road improvement in this town is just not going anywhere. It's not catching up, and our roads are disintegrating and will cost us even more down the road. So that's a little bit something outside the box. But if you look at some of our improvement programs, the $300,000 we give the schools, every year they know they have $300,000 to make improvements. That has a history now of working rather well. This would be isolating funds only for road improvement, which means there wouldn't be that money left over to put anywhere else. So it's not, it's, it's an open discussion and an open decision, maybe not, not for tonight or for tonight or for the future to just think about um, the, and keeping an eye on how the money, how much money we spent this year totally and the, the effect after the fact that we spent it. What can we see? Can you tangibly t reach out and touch something with this? Um, some thought. Can I have, can I say something? I think that um, when I'm seeing all of the building going on in this town, I think that a piece of the puzzle, a piece of information that we need is information from, for instance, the assessor to say, um, with all this new building coming online, we're going to have X amount more money to spend that's just going to be generated through all of these new assets. And it, it gives you a piece of information so that you can say, hmm, maybe we can afford to do that. And mean our April meeting? <laughs> I'm not referring to any, any going into the past. I'm going into the, we're talking about the that. future. Um, but it is a piece of information that would help us to be able to somebody come forward and say, you know, just just standing still with the new smutty nose brewery and, and all those new buildings down at the beach. All this new stuff is coming onto the tax rolls during this next year or the year after, you know, and it gives you a, it gives you a piece of information so that you know, you know what you can you can make a plan, and you're not actually increasing. You could spend more, and you're actually staying the same, just the same because rate. of all those right, exactly because of all those new assets. Mm -hmm. So that's a piece of information that you can't you can't make a plan without all the pieces of information. So, so what you're saying is we need to know our income before we start spending money. Well, it would be good. That would be good. That's, that's what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Tim? Having more taxable property does not mean that you have more money to spend. It simply means you have a broader base upon which you can lay those taxes on. Right? I will, whatever you say, Tim, I'm not going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, can you understand that basic concept? Tim, absolutely. Okay. Thank you All for right. pointing that out. All right. mm -hmm. And, you know, having income <clears throat> has nothing to do with uh, appropriations. What we spend is based on what we appropriate. Exactly. But at the same token, we do have the reval going on. So that's mm -hmm. where now... Our, our in, tax in, base will be reestablished. Will be reestablished and... Since valuation, since the last reval was done, have gone up, we can only assume, or possibly assume <clears throat> at this point in time, that property values will increase and that tax base is being broadened and it will have a positive effect on us, which is nice to have the two things happen at the same time because you are correct. The fact that we are expanding does not necessarily mean, a lot of times it can mean that the tax, the taxes are just spread out, but. Yeah, it should actually be thought of if, if our tax base is broadening or increasing, then our taxes should go down. Exactly. Right. They could, or if so. They, I mean, if you wanted to use that other side, you could. There's two sides of the coin. Right. Or if but they the, stayed the same, yeah. then you'd actually have more money. But the generic, yeah. totally objective statement is. I realize. As I said, earlier, I, yeah. I couldn't disagree with you, Mr. Jones. 
but it would be a good time to perhaps ask the assessor to come in and, and share with us. Maybe. When, I know he's busy. Maybe sometime well, what the, the tax base is, is a consideration. There's no doubt about that in terms of our own work. And so getting that uh, information or that uh, presentation from the assessor that we so long for in our April meeting and was denied uh, is still a valuable thing to have. Although our calendar is now crunched, I'm not sure we can fit them in. Madam Chair, if I may, it's a, it's a simple request by you to, uh, as we've talked about, lines of communication, and not only uh, for increased revenue, but when there are uh, mitigating factors, including abatements, including uh, reductions in value that are taken to the BTLA to include next terror, uh, you'll get a real uh, good picture. The gentleman in the Hampton Beach T-shirt is exactly right. It is, however, a double-edged sword, and you can get that with a simple email, and uh, that'll be provided both by finance and by uh, assessing. Thank you. I'd be satisfied, actually, if that you have the assessor in the Board of Selectmen's regular, <clears throat> and if you had to make some statements sufficient at the Board of Selectmen, that, that would be enough to satisfy my informational needs. All right. Well, let's try I don't to, have any particular questions. Try to deal with it. We have a couple of open dates on the calendar. Let's see how we can best address it. Mm -hmm. All right. I will send the email on that. Um, <clears throat> yes? Um, you had mentioned roads earlier and uh, pavement. I'm pleased to say that um, Fairfield Road, Ruth Lane, and Belmont Circle, um, today we got the second coat. They did a super job. I can't believe it. It looks like a brand new neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, money well spent. Um, just want to throw that out. It's it's today was the day they they finished Fairfield and Ruth Lane and it, they did really good work. Yeah. And it's you feel revived, don't you? It's it's like living in a new neighborhood. It, it really looks great. I, I was extremely pleased with the work, quality of work, and the way they handled it. Um, it looks great. Good work. The sad part. It took what three years mm -hmm. from beginning to end on that, and there's small streets, mm -hmm. and that's my concern with creating something that will be a vehicle going forward. To follow up on your uh, difference between the warrants and the, uh, and the budget, and, and this is educational for myself, I mean, I would, if, if we as a committee, uh, you know, ourselves in with the selectmen, you know, gave the nod to the, to the town manager and, and the department of public works and said, look, we'll, we'll support you. You know, we, we, you can do a 50% increase in the paving budget, or you, you know, we'll, we'll support this kind of increase. I mean, it, what would be the roadblocks or the stumbling blocks, I guess, for them if they knew that they had our support and hopefully the selectmen the support? The stumbling block and roadblock to that in the budget is that all we're passing is the bottom line, one number at the bottom of the budget. Yeah. So within that budget, those numbers can move. And because historically they have, we... we consistently put money into sidewalks and neither get new ones nor get the old ones repaired or even get them sealed but it is one of those things that every year we fund to twenty five to fifty thousand dollars depending on the year okay. we've had money in resurfacing and paving <clears throat> it has ended up in um, the uh, oh god I was undesignated, undesignated funds. funds at the end of the year but it didn't go to roads. Or elsewhere. Or, or elsewhere. It, DPW ends up being the pocket we go in to fulfill the other things that sometimes we need. It's not frivolous spending, but we always seem to be in that pocket. And things don't just go from one year. They go one year to five years, and you're still talking about it after the fact. Exeter Road, we're giving a patch drop. We're not fixing it. We're giving it a patch drop, hopefully to get us through five to seven years for when we told ourselves we really needed to do it. And that's all I'm getting at. And the revert, going to a Warren article would restrict that money for only that purpose. Potential. Lent and Mike. Or another revolving fund. Another, I look at it as a exactly. revol setting up a revolving fund. Yeah. That way you don't have to do a Warren article right. every year for it. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking from experience, we had 300000 in the budget work on roads mm -hmm. for several years. Sometimes it gets spent, like you said, sometimes it doesn't. The year that we looked at that paving that's going on up there now off of Lafayette Road today, we asked the gas company and everybody else to go ahead and do their thing. 
got the road all tore up, and we were going to let it settle for a year. The year that we had planned to repave it, the 300000 was not in the budget. And I, I was a selectman, so I'm kicking myself for not noticing that. I didn't see it. I, I missed it. <clears throat> but then after the fact, I said, why, that, why aren't we doing the road? Well, there wasn't any money in the budget. I mean, that was an easy answer for that one. So I think what we need, because like you say, they can take the money out or not put it in the budget. There's all those things that can happen. So I think if we're going to do something that's some more of a permanent structure, which I think we should do, they need a revolving fund of some sort, because you try to put in a war on alcohol every year and hope that they pass it every year, that's kind of wishing in one hand and doing something else in the other hand. That may or may not happen. So I think you need to look at it more from a revolving thing, if we could. Put the money in, and then there's the money there if they need to spend it. And I'm throwing that out there because we're looking for avenues of cooperation to somehow shorten this budget process and work with the Board of Selectmen right. on several issues. Just a thought out tonight, no decisions. Perhaps this is one particular issue that we could ask the Board of Selectmen if we could possibly do a joint meeting. There's a lot of us with a lot of opinions, but we'll brandish it around in our minds now and, and possibly join with them and see if there's a possibility of actually putting a Warren article out that would be binding and, and good going forward in the future. Boards change. We're going to change next year. They're going to change next year. Um, the one nice thing is that the Warren article that's with the schools has continued for a long period of time. And I think that's one of the reasons why the schools were able to work within that $300,000 budget and actually accomplish something. And it gets passed every year because you can see what it is. It's kept things level as far as the repairs go and has proved advantageous. Now, $300,000 didn't do it with the roads. That's why I'm talking a larger number. And so just something, I don't want to go on too long on that particular, but just give that some thought. Tim? I think Sonny has his hand Sonny. up first. Yeah, uh, what I see, my concern is, I see the budget process is broken at this point. Mm -hmm. You have all these warrant articles that are spending over $3 million, and then the voters give you a default budget. So that means all the numbers get tossed around. You'd be much better off to, to put, you know, for example, the, the assessor, the town's in the process of reassessing. You know, you're not going to have those numbers until that's a multi-year process. Mm -hmm. You know, so this is, it'd be much better off to try to get the budget process to to be more realistic. You know, I mean, you shouldn't have warrant articles to repave Exeter Road. You know, it should be, if it requires maintenance, it should be done. Mm -hmm. Actually, I sent an email to the Board of Selectmen because I went, was driving Exeter Road and I got to Exeter and I saw a sign, no trucks no through traffic for trucks. By doing a surface repavement, and you're going to have all the heavy trucks coming down. It's you're going to have to do it again. It sh you know the road hasn't been engineered for the type of traffic that's going on there. You know these are the issues the town has to face. You know you need some long range planning, and you have to present it to the community so that they understand what's going on because what they do if they see the budget you know going up they'll vote at the fall budget that's what happened this year mm -hmm. you know so you have to get the budget process back back to the common sense Tim I think the uh, central thing that you're speaking to is really about choice for the voter um, because the truth is <coughs> those line items are uh, very temporary in nature. Only the bottom line is yeah. fixed. Yeah. Selecting like can and, and will move those around at will. So putting in a line item in the budget for paving a road or any roads doesn't necessarily mean they'll get paved. I mean, 
There were roads. I believe, Dave, you referred to a few roads. They've been in the budget for years, and they didn't get paved. Uh, if those same questions were not put in a budget, but rather put in a warrant article, then the money could only be used to pave the roads or pave roads, however it's phrased. And if those roads weren't paved, then the money would stay where, you know, in the fund, if there was a fund associated with it, or they could roll it over for an additional year automatically by state law, as I believe, right, Dave? Mm -hmm. um, so basically what you do with a warrant article like that is you're, you're basically earmarking the funds. And when you put the money in line items in the budget, there is no earmark. There's no lockbox, so to speak, if you remember that old phrase. Yep. Warrant articles are essentially like a lockbox. If, and, 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 and the more tightly they're written, the more, the more the lock is unpickable. <laughs> <laughs> but a warrant article is, is, uh, is like a, an open piggy bank. You can just grip. It can be grabbed from. There's no, there's no line items really don't have a lot of meaning. So that's, mean that's, budget. You mean the budget rather than warrant articles? There's a budget. That's, did I say warrant? I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. The, the line items in the budget are, are a temporary nature. There's no certainty that it'll be spent the way the line items indicate they're spent. Okay, and, and so the voters don't really have any, they, they can look at the budget and all those line items and say, gee, I like 90% of those line items. I guess I can live with the other 10% I don't like, so I'll vote yes. But the truth is that they're paying attention. They know very well that those line items don't have a lot of meaning, especially people on your roads that weren't paid for three years because they've been complaining for all that time. And there are other examples in the budget. Some people complain about the sidewalks and they never get touched. Yet there's money in the budget. They assume they're voting in the budget. They're voting for the sidewalks to get done. They don't get done. And this is because of the fluidity of uh, what those line items mean. Whereas a warrant article, a separate warrant article, earmark, if you will, is, uh, is something that they will have a real choice on. Right. So it's about choice, bottom line, for the voter. Yeah. I believe Brian had seen it before. Um, one problem with that is four and five years ago, and I know this is hard to believe, we passed budgets. And one of the main reasons I think we mm -hmm. passed was we started a big thing on getting the Warren Articles were just too confusing, and there were too many. We were in the mid 50s, up of almost to 60 Warren Articles. Now, Warren Articles, I can see if you're going to do the beach infrastructure, if you're going to do a major project. That's the time for me to see a warrant article. Now, the fact that the money goes into the budget isn't spent correctly, or how we perceive it to be spent correctly. All the way it suggests. This is this is another issue altogether. Now, I know that uh, I saw the meeting three weeks ago um, with the selectmen, and they were putting their CIP numbers in. This is something that needs to be looked at. But the warrant articles, when you start bunching them up, and the three roads that were mentioned here have been on warrant articles before. They were denied. So, that, you know, again, that doesn't necessarily speed up the process. And I also think it's, it's just a different view of what you think a warrant article should be. And in my view, there's, there's a certain place should be in the budget they should, you know, people should be held accountable. Emergencies happen, I understand that, but that's where these things should be. When we get into, you know, specific, large amounts of money, then yes, okay, now let's see what the town thinks and let's get their input and let's see what they think about a war amount and what do they want to spend the money. Please understand, I wasn't advocating. Oh, no, I wasn't. I'm just looking at you. I'm not. Okay. The budget it's itself is a war article, by the way. We should keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Number three. Uh, having not gone through the process, and, and I know there's a lot of experience sitting on the board, this might sound kind of uh, unknowledgeable, but... For refreshing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, kind of picking back on what Brian and Sonny were saying, from the sounds of it, from the untrained ear, it, 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 it's making me a little nervous that it's kind of pulling stuff out of the budget and adding more worn articles to it. And I'm and I'm what I'm more specific of is is precedent moving forward. Like, 
okay, so sidewalks come up. Well, in, in five years from now, when all the budgets, when all the committees have turned over, what's what's to stop someone from saying, well, we should have a reserve fund for sidewalks that okay. we should fund every year? Or, or I just didn't know if special, for lack of a better term, special interests, you know, that are about the roads or, or um, specific things. People would now say, well, let's just do a little reserve fund so that specifically focuses on sidewalks. And I just think it, it, it's pulling a little bit at a time, uh, stuff out of the budget. Whereas I, I agree with what Sonny was saying. Let's, let's, and I don't know how to go about this, but the stuff that, the line items that are going in, where's the disconnect with there? Why isn't that money for the line items that's being appropriated? Why isn't that being spent the way it should be? Because of the budget law empowers, explicitly empowers, and by court case, uh, the famous Hampton v. Sullivan case, in which our town attorney actually argued for Hampton, the town, in that case, and won the argument, which was essentially that the selectmen are responsible for managing a bottom line budget, and by their own votes, they can move money from one line item to another as they see prudent, mm -hmm. is, the, is the word I believe that was used. So in their prudential considerations, right, Phil? Uh, they will move money around from line item to line item, okay? And that's just the way the law is, and that's just what I was speaking about. We don't really, uh, the voters, that is, yeah. uh, they, they have a, like an omnibus legislation in the form of a thing called budget. Or they can have these, these single issue ones called a Warren article. Mm -hmm. Now, which, what's, where's the magic uh, Occam's knife to, to slice where one should go versus the other? There isn't such a device, yeah. all right? And it's gonna change with every board, it's gonna change with every year, every season, every generation. Because views change, change. Voters, yep. view, voters change how they view things, yep. so forth. Now, you can say, well, would you, we don't want 100 Warren articles, what Brian was saying, or whatever the number, we don't want a huge number. Well, what is huge? Yeah. The more the more Warren articles you have, the more of a democratic voice is being expressed. Yeah. So how much of a democracy do you want is another way of phrasing it. Yeah. And, and is there such a thing as too much democracy? I think there is, because after a while, it just becomes a, a, cac a cacophony of voices that gets confusing itself. So there's no clear way of drawing the line here. I, I, just I, do, I do love the idea of setting aside a bunch of money for the roads, because this town definitely needs that. Um, using Exeter Road, I'm glad to see something's getting done with it. I'll, I'll sit in traffic on Drake's side for the time being, but I, I, I agree with um, the, the, the idea and the process of making sure that this money gets spent the right way. I just, I, I, I don't know if it's the process or, or how we do it. I, I guess I don't have those answers, so. Nobody does. No, All of the above. No, no, no. That's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm throwing it out, because nobody does. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I went back even four years ago, I would be one of those people saying, you know what, we've got too many Warren articles. Uh -huh. Nobody wants to go through all of these. Till we got this, till this last election, and people clearly made some decisions on how to spend money that didn't even logically transcend my mind in some cases, but they wanted the choice. Yep. And they were willing to spend it, but they wanted a guarantee that it was going to a particular entity. They didn't want it grouped together because too many times we had it grouped together and too many years had gone by yeah. without getting it. Yeah. So maybe out of frustration. Uh, but and yeah, and that's the trend. I see where you're coming from. Like, well, if the trend is they want to vote on what they want, let's have this in place so they can vote on it so people can do that. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, and, I, and I do. I, I do like the idea. Uh, and the, I just don't have the answer. The, the, the process, I want to see the process get better. And I I'm think just, everybody does, you know. <laughs> I'm just asking you guys, Nick, to, to think about it and, and you bring some yeah. fresh air in here for those of us who've sat here because at some point in time, pretty much everybody here, we have a couple of new people, um, but the rest of us have sat here and battled one side or the other, and sometimes we've changed because it's like, okay, we couldn't do that, so now let's try to do that. Yeah. I would, like I said, being one of those people who never wanted to see an additional Warren article that we didn't need, mm -hmm. I now sound like I flip-flopped, which I have, because maybe we need to do that in some instances because we're not getting some things that need to be accomplished. Sonny, you're absolutely right when you say the budget is broken because we have a capital improvement plan that we do not fund. So all the time we spend on that capital improvement plan, if we're not willing to put a dollar to it mm -hmm. and actually fund the thing, we're wasting our time. This is one avenue of taking that piece roads. 
and, and, and funding it. But See, it's just... It's for, for me, the, the, you know, the only clear demarcation that I draw in my mind as to what should be a Warren article versus budget really relates to uh, the life, if we're, if we're investing in an asset or repairing an asset, uh, it, what, what's the lifetime value of that? If it's exceeding, say, five years, then that should be a Warren article. Not should be in a, should not be in a budget. It's a long-term kind of thing, I and mean, probably most of everything that's in the CIP in my mind should be five years or longer. So anything in there ought to be a Warren article or a collection of Warren articles. I don't know. That's but that's the, my demarcation point. An operating budget is a is for yearly expenses, not for capital improvements. You know. Now, some things like uh, stabilizing expenses, like I believe you have a line item here for snow stabilization, which I'm guessing means That's that we don't want to have this going up and down with our snow expenses, you know, You're one year the next, unpredictable. But <laughs> well, that's another example of a valid way of yeah. using a, a Warren article to try to smooth it out over time. Then you have to take the yeah. special interest groups and do Well, Mike's been sitting there with the yeah. stand up. I just Michael. want to add a comment in relation to what. Uh, uh, Ryan said uh, about more articles and having too many of them and so forth. If you're going to do road improvements, that's not going to be small change. Yeah. That's going to be money. Yeah, it's capital improvement. It. Yeah. So I think it qualifies all the way around for not being a ridiculous petty one off. Mm -hmm. It isn't that at all. No, it doesn't belong in the budget because it's a capital improvement, in my mind. I agree mm. with that by itself, too. Yes, no, I totally agree with you. But there are certain things that, you know, uh, as Tim was saying, need to really be in the budget. Didn't we once upon a time have a, ca uh, a road construction fund or something like that? Yeah. yeah 300000 $300,000. It just wasn't Freedom. enough mm. to ever accumulate. You had to go too far out to do anything with it. But then you had... Separate Warren articles coming up for separate streets. I'll give you three streets as a for instance. And you had money in the budget. There is money in the budget for repair and maintenance. And that's what I'm saying. You take 300000 that you have in the budget in different places for repairs and maintenance. And you take 300000 for three small streets. And you take 400000 for resurfacing Exeter Road. You're at a million dollars. That's what I'm saying. It's a good year to look at what a million dollars can buy you if you funded a million dollars a year for that plan. I also think, especially in a seasonal town like this, one of the problems that we ran into was the seasonality and where we were going to position the work. So it would be nice to have this ongoing fund year after year <coughs> that gives you a million dollars that you like the schools. They're pretty much are pretty sure that they're going to get their $300,000 every year. That allows them to plan going forward and lock in and schedule and things like that that you so know, what you're really pointing to is we have the fund for the construction of, and maintenance of roads but it's not getting funded that's the core issue right now right in terms of what i just heard you say it has but been funded in the past i don't know if it's been funded every the year the core now. issue is that it's all all over the place tim I think that's my issue. Is oh, we that have a fund, and, and we also have stuff. In we the had a fund. As well. We've had years we funded it, years we didn't yeah. fund it. Yeah. Um, the whole <clears throat> thing, as itself, is all over the place. <clears throat> if if you can't, you you've been very astute and have followed the budget very well, and you couldn't tell me right now the total of all the funds that we have that go to everything under M and R and road improvement in this town. I couldn't. No, there's a lack of account visibility. Right. Well, it's, this, is, this was one area I thought perhaps might be a good area to tackle, to consolidate, to take maybe some of these lines out of the budget, thereby reducing the budget, and putting them together in a way that most effectively would treat our roads. Now, I've heard Selectman Bean speak about using money from the trust funds, that is to say, as a source of uh, financing for what he refers to as infrastructure. And I'm wondering if he's actually, are you actually thinking about road construction primarily with that? Uh, Out of the trust May place. I respond? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yes, ma'am. And, and I just must leave at 8.15 tonight. Okay. Um, so we'll I, I just want to let you know that. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I agree with your, your concept. Uh, with uh, over five years, there's operations, which is a budget. And then there's there's long-term capital projects. And I think that delineation between 
a Warren article for a six million dollar capital project, the voter can look at that. And like the fire stations, it may take three years, four years, five years, and they finally get one. And the voters, in the end, make that decision. But when you blend those two together, it's difficult. And we're talking about um, reports. Uh, there's 19 million dollars. There's 18 million dollars in change in that uh, in that. That trust organization that has, yeah. 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 It lost 302,000, if I'm looking at this right, um, between 331 and 630, 2015. So they're important numbers. If that took a bigger hit and say we were back in 2008 and you lost two or three million dollars, um, maybe it's time to pull money off the table, uh, have a warrant off uh, article that allows us to use our own money for our own selves. Uh, without an interest cost, and, and that's so I speak to two of your points. Do you, do you intend to take it out as a lump sum? And well, I don't know. Well, you know, that, that's got to be staffed by finance. Um, it's got to be staffed through the town attorney. It's got to be worked with with your 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 uh, committee. But to me, it sounds like a, a good idea. Um, I was just wondering yeah. what the concept. I, I, I'm not trying to nail you down. I'm just trying to understand the concept, because sometimes I hear about using it as a source of you know borrowing money. So we don't have to, you know, uh, pay interest to somebody else. We can pay it to ourselves. Well, exactly. If, or, or not there's there's firms in there that are using our money, and they're paying us three percent. And if we wanted to use, a, or if we wanted to do a capital improvement project right now, we have 18 million and change sitting in the bank. We have to go to the market and borrow money, and we have to pay our own interest at three or four percent. And other people are using our money for the same price. Yeah, I understand that. But know, would there be a potential source of funding for the road construction fund, which currently exists? Yes, sir. Do you see it that way? It's conceptually yes, consistent? Okay. That's something I can't understand, is it seems like the people of this town want to grow this real estate fund forever and never touch it. I don't think it grows. What, they just what are it doesn't the people grow. going to do with the hundred million dollars in the year 2050? No, Glenn, it doesn't grow. All the income it makes in a given year gets thrown into the operating budget. They say they they um, take yeah. Right. It doesn't right. grow. Well, it it is continuously making more money. Yes. Then, and, it, and it's put into the general fund for oh, expenditures. It reduces our right. taxes every year. To a certain I extent. I believe it's something like 600000 600 and change. But, about that, yes. but my point is, is that it's been growing since... They've done a good job. They've grown it. Right. Since um, mm -hmm. the Beach Commission, you know, sold all those leave to town. Well, we're still selling those land, that land. Right. Well, there was like 30 left or something. But my point is that it seems like nobody ever wants... To touch the principal in that fund. Right. The original war article. Right. What are we? What are the, the people in 2050 going to do with it? The, that we couldn't do now. The original. The original war article's intent was to provide a uh, a, a uh, basically a subsidy on, on on an annual basis, an annual subsidy to underwrite the budget. Right. But we don't so need. If to we have didn't have that fund, just to pretend we don't have that fund at all. We we spent the principal on some good thing. Okay. Now I it's gone. Spend all no, let's of just it. pretend for a second just that we spent it all. Put it in well, the road. You want to keep it or you don't want to keep it? We already have a reserve percentage of five million dollars, and we have an extra eighteen to twenty million dollars that just sits there. That nobody seems like they but want. But it to doesn't. Do anything it with. doesn't just sit there. That's the point. It grows money. It makes money. Right. If, if, if we didn't have that thousand compared to eighteen that, that million, money, that money grows and it comes into the town as revenue, offsets the expenses and mitigates exactly. the taxes. If we didn't have that that income coming in but there, do Glenn, we need all of it? No. Well, <laughs> could we use <laughs> more? Could we use more? I mean, or less. It, it comes down to it. Out of it. It comes down to Glenn. Where do you draw that line? There's no magic line here either. But nobody seems to want to like. Go forward with it. I wouldn't say that. We were discussing it. Uh, Mr. Bean is one person. Well, I was discussing it with him. <laughs> <laughs> but all the other selectmen I've heard in the past 20 years, no, we can't touch that fund. I don't know why we don't want to touch it. No, every we want to grow it forever. Glenn, every idea has virtues and vices to it. And yeah. the virtues and vices, or pros and cons, if you prefer, yes. should be evaluated. Just as Ben Franklin would suggest, put it on a balance sheet and see which way you favor it. Oh, I agree. Now there are those who are who are completely scared to death yeah, of speaking about virtues and, uh, uh, and vices of any idea. Oh, right. <laughs> on that I don't know why the answer to that question is is, is a mystery. We have anybody else who would like to discuss this? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Jerry, you haven't said anything. <laughs> well, I mean, Vice. You know, I can see us. We get money from um, the state of New Hampshire for our roads. The, the money comes in every year. We've earmarked it toward DPW this past year, I think. 
We, um, we have a, a fund, a trust fund, that's 18 million or whatever. So I wouldn't, I would, but I would take the, maybe a piece of the throw. Let's say that threw $600,000 a, uh, $600, a year or $800,000 a year. Take half of it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some devote it to the roads as well. Yeah. Now you got the state contribution. You got the throw contribution from the trust. Now we could throw in, in a warrant article, an additional 250 or 300 that we would throw in normally when we were selectmen, Mike, okay? That's a million bucks a year. Right. Could be poured into roads. Very easy. And I think if the people saw that breakdown, they would vote for it. Well, I didn't say where you had to get it from. I just wanted you to fathom in your mind what a million dollars a year in a, in a Warren article, all no, right, it's, it's and a special be. fund just to deal with roads could accomplish over a period of time. But well, well, roads have to be identified, Eileen. Right. The work That's has to be key. done. You'll never get it again. Well, do we agree that, questions. one minute, okay. do we agree that this might be a very good starting point to commingle with our Board of Selectmen? and openly discuss all these ideas on the table. Yes, I it depends. Have I think from our heard them, and I think he can carry that back. I think he can carry that back. I think it's a very open conversation of how we can best solve <clears throat> one of our big problems um, as far as CIP, if you want to look at it that way. The roads are the biggest thing hanging over <clears throat> at, at the moment. I mean, I know wastewater treatment will probably come up in the next conversation, but for now, we've been talking about roads for the past half dozen years, and we finally can actually look and see what a million dollars accomplished this year. What, what is the status Jerry? of Exeter Road, by the way? Huh? <laughs> what, are, they, are they paving that now? A little rough right now, Joe. Yeah. yeah, it's it's they're 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 in the middle of paving it right now. They got a lot of detours going through Drake's oh, side and Toll Farm. Yeah, mm. it's all blocked off at High Street. Uh, I'd like to make a couple of comments. One is that having a joint meeting with the board of selectmen and the, and 15 mem members of this board would be probably close to chaos. I agree. Too many people in the meeting. Okay, I think that's what that one article was about last year, about reducing the budget committee number, members. And the second point I'd like no, to make about that. is following up on one of your remarks, Jerry. If we take the money that comes from the trust fund, which is 600 and some thousand, and we take the money from the state, which is a similar number, why not just earmark that every year for roads? Yeah. Well, I, I, make that I, a warrant article. Well, we need to I'm do? not saying we take the whole throw, Mike. Why not? I w because I like to le I'd like to continue to grow the nest egg a little bit, yeah, and I like to also continue to tax mitigate it by having some go into the revenue. Yeah. I would take half of the throw. I understand that, but I'm saying they give to the town about six hundred thousand. It's gone out of the fund at that point. I don't it's, think it's that much, Mike. Oh yeah, it's rooms and meals tax. It's, it's a half million and change. Yeah, so it's somewhere for roads, yeah. Bill. Yes, no, it, it is about that much. Mm -hmm. So if you add that plus <clears> the state thing, like they advocate, the selectman and Fred advocated this last year, take the state money and yeah. dedicate it to these projects, take yeah. both of them. Yeah. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll see a subcommittee on it's that. It's very feasible. Approach it. Tim? I just have a couple of questions from the experts. Hopefully I can get a yes or no. Remember, he's only here till he got a pass. Right, so that's why it's important that I ask soon. The clock is running fast. <laughs> <laughs> and please don't characterize me as an expert. Maybe, maybe Mike or Nick. <laughs> no, I was referring to the three selectmen and former selectmen that are present. Okay. As far as I know, there's nothing in the uh, highway fund that we have presently in existence that requires it to be sourced only from a warrant, another warrant article uh, for raising. You could take it out of your operating budget if you wanted to and throw money into that fund. And like that. Jerry's saying, there's, say, or we've already agreed, there's about $600,000 being thrown off the real estate trust fund into the operating budget. And you could take it from there and put it, some portion of it in the highway fund, mm -hmm. right? Just like you could do with the state. You get money from the state and that goes into the operating budget, the general fund as it's called. And you could transfer that right into the highway fund. So that is already a power the selectmen hold, correct? They could do that. I'm not saying they should, but they could. Is that not correct? I don't know. I don't know about the highway fund. If you I, I don't know. If it comes in as revenue, I don't know the legal aspects of throwing it into a line item expense for an operating side. It doesn't matter the source I mean, of the funds. As long as it's in the operating budget, once it's there, they can, they can move it where they wish. Uh, now, they might need to get 
DRA approval to move it from the... Taking revenue, Tim, and turning it into an operating expense. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. revenue. No, no, it's already in the general fund. When okay. You, well, I think we could probably discuss this for a long time. Oh, yeah. But we don't have the numbers. We don't, don't know what we can problem. do. So maybe we can construct some, co I some questions. I thought that was one. Yeah. And put them to paper, send them off to me, and maybe we can start to work on some answers to that so we don't spin out once tonight. Will you take a video recording? Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> Wait till I start sending the video recordings back. Um, <laughs> that's all I can tell you. It's all right. Important. Anything <laughs> else on, on goals? Anybody see anything else that they want to talk about tonight on goals or a different way to think? It's a good, good discussion. It's open discussion and new way of looking at things. All right, I'm going to move on to number six, which Tim couldn't wait, the Snow Stabilization Fund. Now, this is on the agenda. Again, new ways of looking at things. Obviously, this year was horrendous. Hopefully, we won't live through another one. Although I did hear this little thing that we're maybe heading into another ice age in the 20. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even want to know about that. I don't <laughs> like anything under 80 degrees. This weather actually is perfect. Well, would you rather be underwater or have a lot of snow? You know, we, the choices <laughs> are not wonderful. But that being said, snow stabilization fund. This came out of talks with the commissioners up in DRA when we were talking. And... Um, in one of their towns, what they did was they created a snow stabilization fund to keep from spikes. Obviously, we may have an overreaction this year to wanting not to overspend the budget and make sure that we cover ourselves. And I'm going to think that a lot of DPWs will be asking for more snow funding and ice funding and that, you know, salt and so on and so forth, everything that goes under that heading and may or may not be needed. And then if it isn't needed, then it ends up going in the general fund, and then another year you'll be looking for another spike. By having a snow stabilization fund, it allows you to level fund an item. And then here again, you know you guys are gonna accuse me of wanting to tear things out of the budget, and it is doing that. I'm just gonna throw round numbers out, say we Snow removal was 200,000 this year, but we only used 100,000. 100,000 would go into the snow stabilization fund so that next year when we fund it again for 200,000, if we run over, we can go to the snow stabilization fund. It will work as a revolving fund in effect to take it out of there and not take it out of other parts of the budget. There are some things we just don't know. Unless you have a crystal ball and you can read your crystal ball really well, you cannot tell what Mother Nature is going to give us, either on the side of hurricanes in this town um, or ice and, and snowstorms in the winter. And this year was a horrible example of how much money can be expended for emergencies. This is one way to not have that budget constantly escalating. Is it, is it a question for, for us, or is that a, I mean, yeah, is, that it, a is that a part of this it committee? Would it would require a Warren article, okay? But yes, it is a part of this committee okay. because it is it has to do with funding. It has to do with money. All right, it's not we're, we're not throwing a policy out there, but we are trying to think outside the box. We're going to spend this money and approve it somewhere, but how we spend it and how we keep it, I think, is very important. Tim, then Dave. You brought up the letter from the DRA, the closing paragraph in that letter. I'm going to read it. Read one paragraph. It states, there are powerful tools available to municipalities faced with unpredictable variable annual expenses. These include the ability to establish res capital reserve funds and expendable trust funds. The purpose of these funds may include but are not limited to items such as road repairs, energy stabilization, and snow removal. Municipalities may also establish a contingency fund by Warren article as part of the annual budgeting process. Please feel free to contact the Bureau, I assume that means DRA, mm -hmm. and your municipal advisor, I'm not sure who that is, <laughs> to receive more information about developing those types of resources. So maybe that's one of the next steps we want to And they have already said that they would help us 
um, since it was, I've stolen that idea. And they said that they would be willing to help us develop that Warren article because they've done it. Um, one of the commissioners has done it in his town. So it's something that I'm throwing out there on the table more as a control. Yeah, the, the only, the, uh, the, the, the virtue I see here is that, uh, you know, it's already been done in towns. It's something that happens mm -hmm. in other parts of New Hampshire. And I know that we had a problem this year, and I'm not sure it's gone away or, or not, but it may come back. Mm -hmm. But in any case, it did highlight the fact that uh, we may be having another emergency down the road, and if we're actually planning proactively for these emergencies, they won't be emergencies to begin with at least from a uh, financing perspective. So that is a definite virtue. Uh, and the, the ability f that there are templates out there and so forth is also virtuous. The one vice is it's going to require uh, people to actually do more work to set it up. So I can't think of any other advice until I say the details, because the devil could be in the details. So we got to work on the details before I can say anything more on it. But I can see virtues worthy of going to the next step. Tim. Madam Chair, I, I think it's a wonderful idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I think we need to eliminate the spikes, the ups and downs. Couldn't we go back in history? <clears throat> and I don't know whether it should be five years, ten years. See how much snowfall there was. Equate that to present day dollars and use that as the starting figure for what, what this fund should be funded on an annual basis. Pretty much what you have in the budget is an averaging over a number of years so and that's what done. they use in the budget and when you get a year like this there's no telling so the difficulty is just converting weather into money yeah because you could have five inches of snow uh, in a season in one season it's one storm of five inches cheap in another season it's five storms of one inches ice covered very expensive. So we can't take, you know, total accumulation and stuff like that into account. We have to, have to actually look at the historical expenses, mm -hmm. I think, right. over the time. The Three to five years, I would guess. Yeah. There's also the and years that you have ten storms, but seven of them in, are in December and three are in, in the not. new year. Yeah, the actual expenses, not yeah. the budgets. Yeah. yeah. Yes, so ma'am. Uh, just a couple things, and I, I am going to um, get out of here pretty soon, but... Uh, um, I know that uh, your leadership on this committee, and uh, I, I didn't necessarily agree um, with uh, the uh, state's opinion on our um, difference of opinion, uh, but I thought that your, your effort and your board's effort was uh, gentlemanly and gentlewomanly and professional, and as we spoke last time, uh, there's, there's a cohesion, and uh, kudos to you and well done. Going forward on, on this, this other issue that you're talking about, uh, and speaking with Mr. Welch today, um, he, his comments were, uh, and he's got a little bit of experience, is that it's called the Snow uh, Emergency Fund, but uh, there, there, were, there were different types of, of weather challenges, and you could expand that to uh, weather or an emergency fund and mm -hmm. an emergency stabilization fund, so you're not limited to uh, the winter months. It could be a hurricane, it mm -hmm. could be a flood. Could be anything. Could be a, a disaster uh, of a fire or anything. Global so, warming or global freezing, either way. Or. It could be <laughs> any of those things. God forbid. Um, and then going forward uh, on that as a, as a risk management tool, uh, big data is very sophisticated. Uh, the uh, end of the season uh, beach festival, they secure uh, weather insurance. It's done by municipalities. Mm -hmm. It's done by big business. And uh, effective leadership and effective management could virtually wipe out that unknown in the budgeting process every year. And our firm, we have, we have a, a small family insurance business. We, we don't do it, but um, if the town, through the finance director, through leadership, through, through the budget committee, started going down that route, you can remove these spikes um, by securing, just as you do a homeowner's or an auto policy. That's what I was going to ask you. I'm aware of, I'm no aware of the festival and insurance. You should get with, uh, perhaps, and I know the board will um, see, see what uh, the uh, um, Chamber of Commerce has done for their events and, and, and what their payouts have been over the years. But you can remove that doubt, you can remove that crimp in revenue, and you can remove that risk very effectively. Because what we're doing now, Phil, is we're self-insuring. Right. So, yeah. 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 so we're already insured. Well, no, <laughs> but, Buffett. but exactly what you're saying. It's just like having fire insurance on your house or flood insurance, yeah. okay? 
weather insurance. Yeah, I, was gonna, I was gonna ask that mm -hmm. question to you, so thank you. Yeah, well, sorry for stepping on your traffic. No, no, that's okay. good, thank you. There's always insurance. It's a question of whether it's third or fourth mm -hmm. party or not. And how much you want to spend? Well, if rate? it's your own, then it's, it's no expense until the risk is realized, and that's, then it becomes a huge problem, potentially. But they'll, they'll study their, the historical actuals mm -hmm. before they come up. Oh, yeah, they'll this. do the same thing. We'll have do, to do. They should yeah. do the same yeah. thing that we, we would be doing to see just what the risk is they're taking on, and then right. adjust your premium accordingly. But they'll, they're not going to just look at us, though. They're going to spread it across municipalities from their insured pool. And that's where, right. that's where the insurance is, is somewhat different. And if I may, Madam Chair, I'm going to excuse myself from, from your, your uh, party here and members. Thank you. And you I still got I, ten minutes. Phil. I look forward to a. Uh, my clock's a little fast. He uh, thought if he said something nice. <laughs> no, we have accurate time here. But, but he thought if he said something nice, he could get out of jail free. Thank That's you very much. <laughs> but, uh, thank you very much, and we look forward to working you going forward uh, as we really get into the nitty gritty of the budget. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank Good night. Thank you. Thank you. And on that note, I'll be. Oh, no, you, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan. I just had one. You're the one paying penance for the last. All meeting, right, so. all right. I yeah. just had one other thing to add on to that, sure. and it goes back to the risk. What is to stop the town or someone else from taking money out of that bottom line and saying, "Okay, we're going to spend this here instead," because we can take money out of the snow. Well, that's what I said about the devil being in detail. Right. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That was my thought too, Brian. Is uh, you know, say we have a couple dry winters, you know, and yeah. the, this fund builds up right. a little bit, and we start eyeing it for something else. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll end up taking it out of this line item and move it there. Oh, well, geez, I, we might not have enough. I next do year. believe if you have a warrant article that specifies how the money goes in, then you would also need. Um, a warrant article to specify how it goes out if you were to change it. Yeah, I'll say limit. I think it makes yeah, sense. See, now I you're getting makes into sense. a deep Don't forget, you have to appropriate. It, it makes sense, Eileen, I think, as a next step to... Yeah. Uh, there's a model out there. I'm sure I can go back to the commissioner and ask him for the Warren article that he submitted yeah. and use that perhaps as just an example of how it was written and is in action. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can have... The selectmen look into the insurance, and oh, I just think idea. it's a place that perhaps we can, that's what I'm getting at, is that with goals, you know, we sit here and we say, well, let's pick a percentage, and let's say flat budgeting, and let's say we look at covering the things that we need to cover, but we can be a lot more creative on how we choose to do that, and I do think that the goal of any long-term budgeting should be this kind of level and not this, okay? because then you know where you're going. Tim. I believe we have a consensus among us that it's worthy of taking a next step in terms of looking into it. So I believe I, we are too. I, I would move that we, we, we ask the chair to follow up with the DRA in, in terms of their invitation. And uh, For also- For further action, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, so we'll get extra, well, let me finish. And, and, and also I think we're gonna need uh, actual uh, costs over we think day three or five well, years. I would go five, five, I would five years. Five years. We need to request actual costs from, uh, I guess, the town manager for the last uh, five years. Actual expenses for uh, snow only, snow and ice, I guess. Or well, you got to have snow removed. Uh, snow and ice. Uh, uh, removing in disposition because they dump it. Finally. Snow and ice abatement. How's that? Yeah. But also, we have to know the the deal. It so, sounds like they're already talking about it. I mean, you know, he's, he's talking about a, a overall weather. Uh, insurance policy is, is the discussion I had well, no, today. We're, we're going to need this information anyway. Sure, yeah, uh, yeah. And I think it came up because Eileen sent out the agenda, and that always catches mm -hmm. Phil being in the town manager's eye when yeah. they see that. So I think that's probably what generated the conversation. May I make a mm -hmm. comment to the, what your your motion is, Tim? And that is that um, you're picking up, you're taking the number five for some reason. It's possible all this information already exists. Oh, it does. And it's, mm. and it's possible mm. it's a six-year thing or it's a ten-year thing. So rather than just saying, putting five, the number five on it, just is the information there first of all. Because well, we know to make somebody yeah, have yeah. to go out and generate some new information that's going to fit into a five-year model, whereas they're using a standard 12-year model. You know, that's we already don't, out there. We well, don't so know what model, out, they use. model they're using. The point is well taken. So I'll modify my wording to say at least five years. Okay. Or 
whatever the model they do. Are well, the CIP, no, we the, need the CIP five only was right five right. years to start with. I, so. would, I would like to think about this. All right, define our current strategy on what we're using for numbers. Are we using a five-year model? Are we using a 10-year model? That's what I'm saying. We're not using any model. Ask the department of the DPW. They're not not using any model because anybody putting together a DPW budget, I can't believe that. You know, I've been proven (laughs) wrong before, but I cannot believe that these numbers that we have for snow removal in the budget. It depends on how you define model. In my world, when you say a model, that means an algorithm in mm-hmm. which you plug in parameters and out pops numbers. Mm-hmm. That's a model, that algorithm. And I, I assure you, there is no algorithm. Right. Your, your world is also controlled with an on and off button. Yeah. That we don't, <laughs> <laughs> have an off that button we don't always no. have. In, in my financial modeling world, what I have are things like actuaries and things like that. Real sophisticated people telling me what components constitute that algorithm. I All understand right. that. Okay. computer is just a tool to achieve that uh, computation. Well, you made a motion, so let's start in... Can I get a second? It's a gentle okay. place. Thank you. Uh, but what am I doing? Uh, just... Uh, well, yeah, the, yeah. the instruction is to, to have the chairman uh, follow up with DRA in, in, in terms of their invitation to get uh, more nice. information about developing these types of resources. Mm-hmm. And, and they did refer to it as a snow stabilization fund. No, they didn't. They did, yes. I talked to them. Well, well, that's on... My memory doesn't fail me yet. And also to acquire um, five years of actual expenses for the town of Hampton on snow and ice abatement. All right. It's been moved. It's been seconded. That would include sand, right, Jerry? Abatement? All those in favor (laughs) of making me do work? (laughs) <laughs> and other people as well. Okay. It's uh, <laughs> unanimous with everyone here. Okay. Great. No one voted no. Well, it might be a good idea to get that in real quick to Christy, because they're going to be starting budgets here any time. So if we're huh. going to get it. We better get moving. Sure, on. Eileen. You know, Eileen reacted right on time last yeah. time with that. It was amazing how fast it turned around. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you didn't want to be me. Um, Whatever figures they They're come. not moving too quick now. By the way, congratulations, Eileen, on your... Uh, timeliness and the quality of your letter to DRA. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, that was great. Kudos. Well, whatever they come up with in terms of, of the snow and ice costs, I mean, we need to know the line items from Wednesday. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Otherwise, because it, they could be, you know, they, they could just be... You know, you know it's pick. covered in a lot of different ways, including ways you didn't we didn't talk about, like overtime, okay? Mm. Um, there's a lot that goes into that. But there is a number that we come up with. Let's start. Let's let's start with this some generalities. This is a good beginning, and we're going to do it in September. Know. Hopefully, we'll have something by September. Some data Hopefully, we won't be meeting in August. Okay, that will allow me to move on. And I know these reports are going to be really fast. It's too bad select when Dean left because his was one of them. Um, yeah, school district for it. budget requests. Uh, budget only, Jerry. Yeah, I mean, we didn't get the end of June. Uh, he's still closing. He was closing June was okay. last week. We have the variance I talked about, <clears throat> several hundred thousand dollar variance. How much precisely, I don't know. Most of that positive variance becomes of a overstated the municipal insurance cost. The state gave us a percentage. We used it. It turned mm-hmm. out to be an overstatement of our cost, what we needed. So it made up 80% of the positive variance we had. If you take away that 80 po- 80% positive variance that we had, we're down to a, over a 99% budget accuracy type of conclusion. Yeah. I haven't got June, but he promises to have it when we meet next in August. He promises to have it. Can you ask him to send it to me when he has it? Yeah. And I'll, sit, I'll distribute it to everybody. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. Precinct. Well, basically, it's difficult to assess our budget because a, a great deal of the revenue comes in in the summer and hasn't been received yet. We also haven't received two thirds of the tax payment from the town. It comes in. It comes in three components, isn't that right, Steve? We actually just got the second check today, the other day. Oh, okay. I picked up the m- on Monday. Okay. The second check. It's good that you two get to talk at this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it's due, on, it's due <laughs> on July 1, right? We have the second check. We I understand have, that. We have the July check. Now, my question is, is by written agreement, it's due on July 1, correct? Yes, Tim. Thank is you. Is it paid on time? No, apparently not. Because they just I, got it. <laughs> I had I I talked with the town treasurer and the and Christie mm-hmm. 
and I talked to them and told them the last year that I don't want them to go out and borrow money to pay the village district well, that's what I was unless get I at. need the money. Okay. And so I had a conversation with them and I'm, I'm very satisfied with the result. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would like that brought up at budget time though because you're not in a position that you need to borrow money, which is a good thing for the precinct. However, if you have a due date for July 1st and you were in a position that you were borrowing money like some other entities are, that would put the burden on you. So Those dates are by written agreement yeah. between treasurers, okay, by statute, mm -hmm. all right? And they're required by law, actually, to be yeah. created every year. Uh, and so if, if village district is going to be so accommodating, and I, and I appreciate that from a town's point of view, yeah. then maybe the, the written agreement should simply reflect that. And, and then it will always be on time. I mean, you could say January, July 1st, uh, but you have a grace period of whatever, if uh, whatever reason. Well, let me restate, let me restate then. It was to the satisfaction, it was on time, okay? We're but very I'll content restate. with the current It was on time. You don't I, I, want to I disturb I'm not trying to make your arrangements and just. I, I, I recognize, I'm simply saying it, it should time. be memorialized in the required uh, agreement, that's all. It, it was on time. Thank you very much. Okay. What else do you have, Mr. Ladd? Well, basically, that's it. That's it. Good. How's the parking, the new parking lot, garage, and the shoes furniture? It's a, a, a work in progress mm, at this Fantastic point. success. Is, it, is the building down? No. Yeah. Why not? Um, there are some issues, one of which was there was a two-month delay. The town required a 60-day notice period before it could be demolished. Uh, you know, are you sure? Uh, you know, and there are Wonderful. some uh, technical issues of whether there's some material yeah, in the building that has to be problems. removed. Is, is no, that no, 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 it's all been closed. No, the only problem is that there is a, some asbestos in the building uh, that we had to have a, a specialist come in and locate and, and then mm -hmm. report on the asbestos. It's in the progress. All these things take time. The asbestos will be abated, then the mm -hmm. building will be taken down. But it has to be done properly. Well, yeah, it's, you're in the middle of a uh, crush right now. It, it's, 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 and, and this has been a funny summer. Not really funny at all, okay, because it's only up till this past week, it's right. been terrible weather. Yeah. And those businesses, the window is closing fast yeah. and it's only oh, yeah. just starting to pick up now and it's a it really is that engine has not been running and you know Nick you work Sir, at Little mm -hmm. Jacks yep. all the places are making it they're making it but they're not making what they should be yeah. where they really need to make a ton of money before we don't want to get in away well and there was that piece on five was it five, channel five or channel seven news today that it was, was, yes. it was the whole thing they about. They visited Hampton Beach. Yeah, they visited yeah. Hampton nice. Beach. It was nice PR, mm. but but the truth is that we really need to have some good weather from this yeah. point on, mm. and we need those eighty degree days every day now for the next right. four weeks. Because, because the kid, the kids got out of school late too because of the bad winter, yeah. which kind of pushed all the vacations back. Right. July fourth, even being on a Saturday, mm -hmm. was nowhere near as busy as past years. Yeah. But but like you said, you know, at my restaurant. We had our busiest day of the season so far was this past Sunday, exactly. and, and and this whole week has been great. Um, so they're here, mm. but it, it's it's taken some time to get them in. Well, we didn't so these, hit these we didn't hit ninety they, till yeah. a couple of days ago. Okay, yeah. so mm. it, it, directly related to the parking situation and our revenue down to the beach, Tim, because not only are we is the building still there. Oh, which see, that was the beginning of my question, not my actual question. So these variables that you're referring to, the need to abate the the asbestos. The 60-day requirement on from the town to tear down the buildings. None of this was uh, foreseeable, apparently, uh, so that the voters could have been informed at the annual meeting, right? So my my next question is: They did pass the bond warrant article, and I keep I keep hearing about a bridge loan. So I know that's what you use to uh, pass the deed, right? You use the bridge loan. Has the bond actually issued yet? Tim, it was decided at the village district meeting. The last builder. I, I should be letting Bob speak about this if you'd like to. We t have taken out a 10 year mortgage. We do own the property. And this year, while not a wash, is obviously not going to be a great revenue producer. Mm -hmm. But 
this lot was bought for a considerable period of time projected going forward. And three major developments right around that lot are in progress, out of the ground right now. And there's been a lot of inquiries about from condos ownership about renting spaces in this lot once we put it together. We're not concerned about the long run. It's just like anything, starting out there yeah. will be yeah. a transition. Couple period, speed bumps, yeah. And it'll all I'm, be great. I'm not, I'm, together. I'm not concerned about uh, the, the cash flow or your, your uh, income expense uh, statements. I've never had a concern about that, and I, and I still do not have a concern about it. I am concerned about the, the integrity of the ballot. Which that warrant article that authorized you to purchase that property through the issuance of a bond. And what I'm hearing now is that the bond's off the table, but we're going to keep the rest of the warrant article and buy the property. That's what I'm hearing. Okay, Tim, there was a wrong? reason, if I can, if you, Madam Chair, do you wish me to explain this to Mr. Jones? Okay, okay uninterrupted. The, the bond process was going to take three or four, it was going to be three or four months before we got the bond, and we didn't want to miss the whole season. So we were going to get a loan from a bank in anticipation of a bond. But we got, in, ta in talking with this bank, we got such an excellent rate, and if we decided instead to take a 10-year note instead of a bond for 20 years, the bond, we got the, we got the loan, but what happened is that if we then proceeded to get the bond as well, we would have spent another $10,000 because that's what it costs to go to the bond council. So we thought it would be very prudent. Um, and by taking a 10-year note with this particular bank and um, the payment, it, we got such a spectacular rate because we're being a municipality that um, it didn't make sense to do the bond. It would have cost more to do yeah. the bond and to spread it out for 20 years. We'd have been spending a lot more money yeah. at the end um, in interest and stuff. So the commissioners voted that this would be the most prudent way to do it. And so uh, with the approval of the, um, with the DRA and with the <coughs> approval of the lawyer, of course, that the village district lawyer, um, it was it was done that way. DRA so, approved. Oh yes. Yeah. So it was all done. Everything's been, you know, the eyes have been dotted and the T's crossed. We own the property. We're proceeding as best we can. We're dealing with a few speed bumps, but everything is going very well. And and I assure you that everything was done above board. So what do you think? Nice. The well, it may it may be done above board, and you may have gotten all of the bureaucrats to throw holy water and all that. But the bottom line is the vote has passed a warrant article that said get a bond by the property. Let me finish. That said raise an appropriate via a bond. It was explicit. I don't a remember, bond. I don't remember, Tim. I well, I do. Okay, well, I don't. I don't have that in front of me. I, no. I, I, I believe. So I'll allow me to okay. finish my statement. Madam so Chairman. this is another example in my mind. And I, you know I get infuriated when I see the voters vote being ignored, whether I favor or disfavor their vote. I, this is an example of it in my mind. Tim, we've Enough got said that, for now. we have that point. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chairman, this is not a precinct meeting. This is a right. budget committee meeting, and I do not <coughs> personally want to hear any more about the precinct and their I agree. Uh, financing, and if they're scratching Thank somebody's you. behind. Amen. I'm all done with it. Thank I'm, you. Unless Thank there's you. something else. Is that a motion for all time or just this moment? I'm going to move on to number 10, Thank full you. business. Thank you, Madam. Okay. And the first thing on that list, and I'm going to go through it quickly, is the secretarial position. I'm going to begin to post that and put an ad in the paper if need be, so that for the September meeting we have a secretary. Everybody okay with that? What's our first budget that's going to come before us? What was the schedule? September, like? October. It, no, it actually comes in October, the end of October. October. Okay. Yeah, and there's a couple of meetings. There's a September meeting, but really we need to warm somebody up to who we are and what we are, unless we get somebody who knows who we are and what we are. But at this point, we really do need a secretary to start to come back on board. The only change I might consider is that we don't have that permit we don't mandate that that person be here yeah. but that will make the voting a little bit more arduous on us because we're going to we can't depend that the it's going to be shown right. no and we're going to have to do a roll call vote mm -hmm. but if that means it'll make it more interesting for somebody to do it then 
I, I'm kind of for that idea. Okay, I'm gonna I'll post it. I'll let everybody know how the progress is going, and go from there. Summer schedule. Um, does anybody have any problems with us taking a break in August? No, I think no. it's fine. I moved it. We skipped August. Thank Thank you. You. I think we just hold it in reserve and anticipate not using it. Well, it is on the calendar. I'm not going to cancel it from the stand. I, what happens is when I reserve it on the calendar, as I get into that week, if I don't see that we need it, I'll let it go and I'll let Can't Christy imagine. know, okay, that, um, that we, we don't need it. Right. Um, but motion here to cancel at this point. No, no, you got a consensus. Everyone agrees. Yeah. All right, and that's it. Save the uh, minutes. New business. New business, records request. I would say from this point out, I'd like to see a records request portion of the budget, of, of our budget discussions. And that would be like last year, where we put together questions that we have in an orderly fashion, you give them to me, and I distribute them to the departments. Now, I'm going to trust that all of you from this point on are going to be watching, at least in rerun, selectmen's meetings or any anything that has to do with the budget talk after this because trust me we're halfway through summer it will start at this point okay and now is when you have the questions don't save them it proved much better to roll them out last year as we got them the only thing I ask you is that you send them to me do not put your opinions in them it's purely a question point and I'll meet those out if I have duplications, I'll only send one. And it happens. Sometimes two or three of you have the same question. I'll only send one. This is the same process as last year, right? Same process okay. as last year. Only I think this year, I, I'm really asking you guys to think a little further ahead. All right? Some people think of it on Monday nights. I want you to think a little bit further ahead. Last year, we did not get documentation that we needed in a timely manner. And I want to give everybody every benefit from a time standpoint to gather the information and give it to us. You know, if you went to, if, if you went to Lope on any one of my work days, you may not get what you want, only because I don't have the time to actually get to it. And I would like to give the department heads and the secretaries and that who work on these things a little bit of running room, with all due respect. So I'd like to breathe some life into this records request. I'd like to see it come from, I, I believe every single one of you should be contributing something here. Not just Jerry? Well, Jerry did a great job for everybody last year. Yeah. And he was very articulate in his questions. And quite honestly, department heads appreciated getting the questions the way mm -hmm. he, he wrote them out. But no, this is not just a Jerry project. It is for all of us. I think it would be useful mm -hmm. if uh, anyone who sends the questions, Eileen send them, sends them to everybody, even uh, everyone on the committee, that is. Just do not respond. But it, what it might do is generate, uh, you know, uh, some nuance to a question that's already been asked or generate a whole new idea of a question in your own mind, good which point. you could then submit to Eileen good, uh, and the, the rest of us. The validity of that is good, because for someone like myself who has, right. you know, just starting out with this whole budget process, it's good to see, you know, where you guys are coming from and, and the types of questions you're asking so mm -hmm. I can be, then when I watch the selectmen's meeting or, or, or see things going on, I can have that kind of mindset myself. That's, that's a good point, Nick, and I want to mention something. In the in the past, we used to get a list from Joan of all the members' uh, emails, addresses, and we, of course, with Joan not here, I don't know all of the email addresses. Do you no, have I that have list? Yeah. It's, in our, it's in our most recent email. Yeah, it is. Reply all. All of you. It's, on, it's on the website as well. And you can well, that one on the website is not accurate. I haven't gotten any, any Wait, emails from you, that's Madam why Chair. I, was I, get say, I don't Christy. think I have your email Nick, you address. didn't get the most recent one? No, the most recent email I've gotten in, you know, I know he was on the list. That was on that list. You sure well, I wasn't blocked, I maybe? I look in your spam I folder. I, I check it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you looking for? I do. <laughs> I, actually, I actually looked at the, you know, it, it had the sum of them mm -hmm. that had like six I'm more. Sure so I I'm sure it was. To see. It was and I wanted to see if everybody was there. And it wasn't. I specifically mm -hmm. did this just last night. Well, yeah, Michael will never be there, but I think at this point everybody else has Mike an email. Mike is the only one that He's doesn't, the only have, one an doesn't email. have an oh, email address. I did not have Nick's. I know for a fact. Our bridal. No, that's your father, isn't it? My father, yeah. So, 
All right. I don't think the list is complete. I'm more than happy to, to leave it. You can't read your email reference? My, no. my contact <laughs> list that I had updated for you? Yeah. Say, say that again. I'm sure I put her and put him on there. I yeah, that's what I'm saying. Out of my way, looking for him. And that's what that's how I sent when, it out. When you sent the the list around, uh, I believe it was in April. I, I, I filled out my stuff. Okay. There before, might just be a typo. Before you leave, I wanted her to confirm yeah, it. That's I will I definitely right. confirm with you because I know that I have Scotts. Yep. And I know that I have Glens, and I have everybody else's, and you all get stuff from me. Yeah, I got the agenda. That was. The, the I got the agenda. That's how. I, yeah, that's agenda. why I always need to get a copy of the agenda. And you didn't uh, get yeah. the agenda. <laughs> no, okay, sir. So he's not on the list. He's all not right. There. Before you leave, I'll, tonight, I'll confirm with you. I would before have I you shouted across the table, but then everybody would be emailing you. Oh, <laughs> feel free. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Thousands of watching. An open book. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, th I I do think the only thing I ask is that if anybody sends anything information only, do not get into a back and forth. All right, because then we got to put it into the, the minutes, and mm -hmm. God, we got enough to do. So it's agreed upon that Tim's idea that if there's a, if you send out some questions, they're going to be sent to everybody. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that, as long as, like I said, help. information only. Can we agree to that? Yes. Thank you. I agree with you. Okay. All right, minutes. Do you guys feel that you need to look over the minutes till the next meeting? They can go in as a draft. No, I looked at it. I'm okay. I think we should. Anybody them. not? Let's put it that way. I haven't read them. Okay, with the minutes. okay, you haven't read them. Some of you haven't read them. They'll go in there stamped as a draft. We'll approve them at the next meeting. One other thing on our new business before we move out to, to adjourn. Um, we got the uh, July uh, finance report. I mean, it came out in July, the June, June. Uh, expense, uh, income expense statement from the town. Yes, sir. And it's not, uh, there's, there's no real problem with that. I looked through the whole thing, and we're running about... Uh, mm. Uh, tar under target by four hundred twenty thousand dollars, so we're not running in the red according to the target. Okay, if you think the target is accurate, and I think it's pretty close. But the only I only had one question: assessing contracted services is over by thirty nine k. So I'd like for you, Madam Chairman, if you would ask uh, Christy what that the audit. What the, what it's, the it's, yeah, it's the audit. Yeah, the I'd audit have to go back. Yeah. Remember, he got the assistant, uh, but mm. then he has the default budget, too. So I'm guessing that that assistant wasn't funded in the default budget. I'm just guessing. Well, it was. It mm. was funded in the default oh, budget. Oh, yeah. They know, but last year was about 48 right. k and there's 60 some thousand budgeted, and it's over by 39, so we're spending almost $100,000. Mike, would you send yeah, me this that? Is the second. Yeah. Yeah. Would you if send you me that? it on to Christy, I appreciate it. All right, it. and I'm glad you stopped and asked that question because I had two more things that I forgot. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to go too <clears> fast here. Inadvertently, when we were forming the committees, I forgot the IT committee, which I think is really important because they're spending some money this year on stuff that. I don't know anything about, and for that reason, Tim, yeah. since we go to you for everything with IT anyway, yeah. I'm going to twist your arm <laughs> to be on that committee and hold you to it because you weren't on any of the others. You declined the last one I put you on. So would you do us that honor and <clears throat> take that subcommittee for IT? Besides that, you know, you served on the committee, so you know way more than we do. And you can take a couple of other volunteers here, I'm sure. Please say yes. What is it you want me to look at? In the IT? I want you to serve on the IT subcommittee. Okay. And what or whatever we'll comes up on the IT subcommittee as far as funding goes. It's a yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. All healed drama. Blood. Don't make me let's stop the drama. The healed. I'm yeah. trying to think about what it, what are we doing. That's all. Well, you already talked to me about some of the ideas you had. So why don't we just move? Well, that forward. was when it was a Slepman's IT committee. It was years ago. Right. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll Thank do you. It. Yeah. Could Thank I, you. Could I move to adjourn? Nope. No. Not yet. <laughs> I'll volunteer to help. Him. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a kick in the ass. Okay. Stop Here's my whole second. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, a kick in the ass? <laughs> you know, I do believe that we're probably we're not using on, good we language. Yeah, we're still on. Yeah, we're, we're still on. on television, folks. Let's not be using language like okay, that. Okay. So. They before they know what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, anything else that I've forgotten, which is possible? No. I don't no, remember one too many things. Jerry? No, the second. report shows the gas accounts mm -hmm. are about 30% spent. The diesels are a little bit more expensive before you mm -hmm. So we, d yeah, we, we, we struggled with that. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, mind you, the default budget went into effect anyway. Yeah. So, they're, but they're, so the budget lines are overstated then, in the default budget. So they got all that money to compensate for the snow mitigation. Yeah, well, Jerry and I had hours into trying to figure out what that uh, magic number would be, and I'm, I'm not just, worried about the snow removal. Yeah. No, he's making a point about the uh, abuse or use of the default budget as it's created. I know. Uh, okay. Yeah. I know. Okay. All right. Thank you. We all set to adjourn. Well, it's your urgent to go. Did you make the motion? Steven, I did. You, Steven, I sorry, sorry. Go. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. second. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I will. I will.